sometimes we don't feel like worshiping God. There's times in our life when things don't go right and we don't understand, but we worship God by faith. Now, the whole book of Hebrews chapter number 11 is about men and women who exercise faith, not emotion. And uh, in our life, uh, we, need to, we need to make sure that we are eternity driven, not by our emotion, but we make every decision that we can based on eternity. Listen, you may get an opportunity to make a million bucks a year, but if that keeps you out of God's house 95% of the time, and you can stay at your job where you're making uh, $10 or $15 an hour, the better choice for your soul is to stay where it's $10 or $15 an hour. Amen. There's lots of people who have left because they've been emotionally driven by something or by their wants. Amen. But, but we need to make sure that we make all of our decisions based on how will this affect my eternity. Amen. Because eternity is forever. We live in a little stance of time. We live between a dice between two dates. Amen. The dice is little in reality. But what is what happens after those dates? Eternity has always been even before you were. It's hard to wrap our mind around that. You weren't some soul floating around in eternity. God just chose to, this is the body He's going to put you in. But when you were born, you were born in the image of God and that tripart nature of God. You were born body, soul, and spirit. And before you were born was eternity. And after you die, you will be in eternity. And so every decision that we make needs to be based on eternity. And our worship to God will affect our eternity. Worship isn't just, once again, slipping up your hands or lifting up your voice. But worship is our lifestyle unto God. And so uh, people will say, well, God understands my heart. Yes, He does understand your heart, but He may not agree with it. And you better make sure that your heart is right before God. Even if you say, well, if you understood my heart. You know, too many people are driven by their emotions and driven by their flesh which is born in the Adamic nature and is contrary to the holiness of God. And when we are born in that, we cannot trust that Adamic nature and we cannot trust our hearts. Amen? Amen. So our worship needs to be 
made a choice. Amen. Of doing God's perfect will. Someone, let's all turn to Samuel chapter, 1 Samuel chapter number 15. And would someone read 1 Samuel 15, verse number 22? Amen. Those words again have the Lord as, as, as great delight. Delight's the first blank. Behold, to obey, obey is the second blank, is better than sacrifice. That's the third blank. Someone want to tell me, um, well, let's just stop right there for a minute. In 1 Samuel chapter number 15, if we could take a few moments, and I want to look at this for just a few moments. I know it's probably familiar to you, but I do believe that I can bring out some things to you tonight that maybe have been forgotten or have not been familiar to you. And so uh, the Bible says that Samuel sent, uh, uh, the Lord sent Samuel to anoint uh, uh, Saul uh, to be king over his people. And, and to hearken unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Amen. A position in Christ means that we need to hearken to the words of the Lord. Now, this was Samuel, or Saul was going to be given commandment after he was anointed of Samuel. But we are given the entirety of the written word of God. Now, if someone comes to you and says, I have a word to you, uh, the Spirit of the Lord has given me a word to give you, and it doesn't line up with the Word of God, let me just tell you, that is not a word from the Lord. It will align to the Word of God. Now, there's many people that claim this to be prophets, and they like to give a word, and we live in a day and age where people want to see the signs and the wonders. And I do think that we can show them signs and wonders in the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But there's lots of people trying to show signs and wonders in the flesh. And so here it is that if it lines up with the Word of God, then we need to, uh, and, and everything about that person's life lines up with the Lord, then, then you can take heed to it. However, we need to be following the Word of God in our life. And so the Word of the Lord came unto uh, Samuel, and, 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 and the Bible says that the Lord said, uh, Remember that which the Amalekites did to Israel, and how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Listen, God does not forget those who do evil to him and his people. Now, we'll talk in a little bit, but 500 years has passed. And God has been gracious. The Amalekites could have repented. And they had ample, 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 ample amount of time. But they did not repent for their evil before the Lord and to God's people. Remember, vengeance is the Lord, uh, is God's. He will obey. And so uh, here it is that the Lord has spoken to, to, to Saul, to Samuel, and uh, wanted him to hearken unto the words of the Lord. Amen. We have to trust and obey when we serve the Lord. And so uh, the Lord spoke and He said, I remember the Amalekites, how they did evil when, when the people of God were weak. They prayed on the people of God's weakness. And uh, the enemy is still like that today. He knows when you're weak. He doesn't hide outside your house and wait for you to verbalize and articulate your weakness. But he sees everything about your life. He's watching and he's prowling. And uh, he, he's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a roaring lion seeking you may be devour. And he'll wait till you are weak and he will pounce upon you. And that's exactly what the Amalekites did to the children of Israel when they were weak coming out of Egypt. And uh, the Bible says that uh, God said, I'll go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and women, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. So all that God says, 
said, he said, I want you to utterly destroy them. I want you to keep anything. Brother Doug, God's word was, was clear to, 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 to Saul. He was given orders, Brother Justin, to march and to carry out what God had asked him to do. And so to utterly to destroy. Now, in the Old Testament, there are many types. We look at the Old Testament, and there are types that are given that are references or given many things in the New Testament. When we study that, this out, Sister Dot, uh, Amalek is a type of the flesh. When we look at the Old Testament, Amalek is a type of the flesh. We're, we are talking about worship. I've not stopped talking about worship. But this is very needful. Our bodies are to be presented as a living sacrifice. We're talking about the Old Testament. Amalek being a type of the flesh. Being a type of what I've already re referenced as being the Adamic nature. Uh, the type of the flesh or the sinful nature. Uh, uh, it, 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 it's characterized in man trying to do what he wants to do to save himself. Remember when Adam and Eve left the garden, or when, when, when they had said that the glory of God uh, was departed from robing them, uh, th them and their, uh, their nature clothed themselves with fig, fig leaves. God said, that's not good enough. Leaves will not do. You need to, to, to cover yourself with a, a blood sacrifice. And then they were covered by, by that of, of, of animals. Listen, whether we think it's to save ourselves by good works or by monetary things and money, or whether we think it's by simply creating some type of religious facade that will make us righteous, it will not do the work. Amen. That is the part of the flesh that is not pleasing to God. God wants us to crucify the flesh. And so uh, uh, it, it's, it's always been part of the, the man's struggle. Uh, Paul said, uh, for if you live to the flesh, after the flesh ye will die. And so uh, uh, the struggle is already way back here in the beginning. Uh, the, the struggle of the flesh. And so God said to, to Saul, He said, I want you to go and I want you to destroy. I want you to destroy everything. It is a type of the flesh. Destroy it all. Let me tell you, I know that uh, what I'm preaching tonight is not popular. And you can go to any mainstream church and they will preach that you can do and feel and live as you may. But that is contrary to the Word of God. So you can go and have your ears tickled. And, and there's lots of people that do. I deal with it all the time. Uh, lots of people want their ears tickled. Uh, but, but the Word of God is, is adamant in telling us that we need to crucify the flesh. We need to destroy it. There's nothing good in me and there's nothing good in you. The only good in us is Jesus Christ and Him crucified and the Spirit of God that dwells in us. Once again, we are earthen vessels. If the treasure that is in us, if there's anything that is a treasure, it is the Spirit of God that fills this earthen vessel. We are empty, we are void, we are destitute uh, without, without uh, the Spirit of God, without Jesus Christ. Lots of men and women will have lots of propagandists to feed you and tell you and lead you to tell you that there's an easier and a better way. Uh, it doesn't line up with the Word of God. And so the Bible says that Saul gathered all the people together and he numbered them. And we're not going to talk about all those numbered. And, and, and the Bible says in, in verse number 7, And Saul smote the Amalekites. And uh, 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 jumping down to verse number 8. And, and, but the Bible says that he did not take all of them. Once again, God had been merciful with the Amalekites. They had years, they had centuries to repent and make it right, uh, but they did not. Let me tell you, the grace of God is great, but if you do not allow the grace of God to work in your life, amen, we will face the wrath of God. Amen. Just because someone lives any way that they want to live, and it seems like they're getting by with it, hold on. Don't, 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 don't underestimate the grace of God. And don't think that God is not uh, 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 being a, 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 a just God. God's justice will be, and none of us know when the, 
the, the uh, expiration of the grace of God will be. But God will pour out His wrath for those who live contrary to Him and work against Him and His people. Amen. Bottom line. And so here it is. Uh, they had been uh, 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 feeble uh, at uh, Deuteronomy 25. And, uh, 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 and God uh, uh, commanded the, their extinction. And so here it is. 500 years He gives them respite to repent, but they do not repent. And so the Bible says that they destroy, however, they take uh, Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive, and they utterly destroy all the people with the edge of the sword. Now, here it is that what, what Saul was saying, he was saying, wait a second, I will destroy everything, but I'm going to keep the best. Agag, he's, he's the best. He's the king. We're going to keep him. That is like us as believers. We can say, God, I'm going to give you worship, but there are certain areas of my life it's pretty good. So I'm going to hold on to it. I'm going to keep that. God says He wants it all surrendered to Him. What you consider the best, amen, God still says is the flesh and does not merit, amen, that we need to have Christ crucified entirely in our life. Amen. And then when we follow out His plan, Amen, and giving Him our all, not withholding anything, that's when we come to real worship. That's when there's real sacrifice. Now I know that's not a popular message. And I know it's not a message that's pleasing to the flesh. But the problem of it is, is that anything in our life that takes our objection off of Jesus Christ and Him crucified and Him as Lord God Almighty, even though we think it's best, God says, it is sin and it is flesh and you need to destroy it. Listen, we can go through our house and we can pull certain things out that we know that is contrary to the Lord. We can rid our home of them. But there may be other things where we think, well, that's not so bad. Or in our life, that's not so bad. God's not looking for us to judge. God is looking for us to sacrifice and rid our life of anything that takes place of Him. Don't ex and I don't want to get ahead of myself because I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Don't expect the world to understand the way you live because they don't have a relationship with God. And we can talk to people to their blue in the face and they say, may say, well, I don't feel I need to live that way. I don't feel like I need to go to church. Those folks are a bunch of hypocrites. Do you know what? You have a problem. You have spared Agag. And you know what? The world, once again, will not understand it. But we need to hear our marching orders from God, the Word of God, the holiness of God. Amen. And then when God gives us our orders, we say, God, I'm giving all with no holding back. I'm not keeping the best, but I'm surrendering it all to you. I wonder if we got real serious with God in a place of prayer, what things would come out of our homes, what things would come out of our lives, what things would come out of our families, because we say, I'm going to worship God sacrificially. I'm giving God my all with nothing held back. We like to hold on to things that keep us comfortable. We like to hold on to things that we think are good. Amen. But if we hold on to them and they take any type of our affection off of Jesus Christ, then God is not honored by that. God is not looking for our sacrifice. God is looking for us to trust and obey Him. Amen. Amen. Take a leap of faith, Peter. Walk out of the boat. Amen. Try Jesus. Amen. Walk by faith on the water. Get your eyes off of everything else and get it up on Jesus. Amen. That is a sacrifice of worship. 
I know that sounds hard tonight. But that's God's work. Amen. And I don't think that anything is too hard for God. And God will never ask anything that is too hard of us. He told them to utterly destroy everything. Eliminate. You know what? Faith will utterly destroy anything that rears its head up against the holiness and the righteousness and the priority of God being number one in our life. That's worship, folks. The Bible says, but Paul said, the people spared a guy. And of the fatling, and of the lambs, and of all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them, but everything that was vowed and refused, that, that they destroyed. Right here it is. Amen. They destroyed what seemed vowed. I just spoke with someone recently, and, and, uh, and, and they know the truth. But they, they, they have friendships that tamper in other religions. And they say, well, but they don't believe this. And they don't believe it. Bottom line. Bottom line. They don't believe Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ crucified and the blood of Jesus Christ for salvation. There is no other way to heaven. You better be careful who you're talking to and who you're compromising with. Whether it's for friendship or whether it's because of a relationship that you want to have, you better be careful. Amen. Because you can say, well, it looks good. It may look good, but it is not good. Just because it doesn't look vile and re refused to your eye doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be destroyed. God says, destroy it. And so, uh, there are lots of things that look religious and there's lots of works that look good. We will not make it to heaven by our works. Amen. They will not save us. Our salvation will cause us to work, but we will never work for our salvation. And so, the Bible says that the word of the Lord came unto Samuel. And the Bible says that he could not sleep because he was so upset. He was grieved and he cried all night unto the Lord. Let me ask you something. When was the last time that your soul was grieved because folks didn't love God and serve God to the fullest? It should grieve us. Amen. When folks do not make an entire commitment to God and to God's Word. We have become such a generation that we are comfortable, we are tolerant, that we just accept as is. We need to be grieved for what grieves the heart of God. Amen. 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 The Bible says uh, uh, that, that, that Samuel arose and he went to meet Paul and he, uh, uh, Saul and he came to, 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 to Mount Carmel uh, 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 to Gilgal and, and, and Saul, he said, he's he came and he said, uh, 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 Blessed be thou the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Some folks can have themselves so convinced that they did God's will, but they haven't sold out completely. Amen. They're still holding on to things. They're still doing things the way that they want to do it. Let me tell you, real worship is doing it the way God wants us to do it. Living a life of righteousness. Selling out entirely to God. And he says, I, I, I've done it. And all of a sudden, uh, Samuel says, uh, says to him, what means the bleeding of sheep in my ear and the lowing of oxen? Now all of a sudden, you read in verse number 9, the Bible says, Saul and the people spared Agai. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, Saul says, uh, they have brought from the Amalekites for the people spared the best sheep and the oxen. And he doesn't say anything about uh, uh, right now Agai, but the story has changed and no longer is Saul and the people, but Saul blames it off on the people. It's easy to blame everybody else for our lack of commitment. But you know what? God puts us in charge of doing the job of selling out. And we someday will not stand and point at other people. But they did. They said they do. God doesn't care. God wants us to live a life of sacrificial worship. 
That means giving all. Selling everything. Following His Word completely. When God says do it, we do it. And Samuel said unto Saul, Say, Stay, and I will tell you what the Lord has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When you were little in your own sight, you were made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed you king over Israel. And the Lord sent you on a journey. He told you to destroy the sinners, the Amalekites. A fight, a fight until they, they be consumed, the Word of God says. And, and, and you did not obey the voice of the Lord, but you did uh, fly up on the spoil and, did, and, and you did evil in the sight of the Lord. And, the, and, and Saul said unto Samuel, Yes, I, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone on the way in which the Lord has sent me and I, 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 I brought Agar, the king of the Amalekites, and other than destroyed the Amalekites. And, and, and the people took spoil, uh, uh, took of the spoil of sheep and 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 the chief things uh, which should, should have uh, not only been destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord uh, your God in Gilgal. And Samuel, he said unto him, The Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices. Uh, 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 but, 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 but your, your, your obedience is better than sacrifices and to hearken than the fat of rams. Do you know some people live their life this way? They say, you know what? I'm going to do what I want to do. And then I'll ask God to forgive me. God doesn't want you to do your own deal and then ask Him for His forgiveness. Yes, if we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9 says, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins. But God desires for us to live above sin. Some people think, well, I, 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 I'll, I'll marry and, and hasten and repent and leisure. Some people think, well, I'll, I'll only do it for a moment because I don't want to. It feels good. And then I'll ask God to forgive me. I'll make it right before I die. I'll make it right before the next church service. God doesn't want you to plan out asking for forgiveness. God wants us to live holy. And that is worship to God as we live holy. You may say, well, I'll let this word fly out of my mouth when I'm mad, and then I'll ask God to forgive me. No, God doesn't want that word flying out of your mouth. Well, I'm going to do this because it feels like I need to uh, 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 retaliate to that person who did me wrong, and then I'll ask God to forgive me. God doesn't want you to retaliate. God wants you to live holy. We think that we can live our life the way that we want and then ask God to forgive us. That's exactly what Saul did. He said, I'll do it my way and then I'll, I'll sacrifice. God didn't want to sacrifice. God wanted His obedience. What are the things in our life that God really wants us to be obedient over? You may say, I'll make it right someday. Someday I'll, I'll live better. God doesn't want it to be someday. God wants it to be today. The Bible says that it all stemmed in rebellion. We would never think of going and having a, a, a witch show us how to cast a spell or cast a spell. That's demonic. But do you know what? God puts that rebellion that's placed in our heart to do our own thing on the same level as witchcraft. So we better think next time. Before we do and think of it, we'll, we'll, we'll repent later. That's bread and rebellion. That's demonic. That's hell based. So God help us to live a life of worship to God. But to work a life of sacrificial worship by doing God's will, even when we have to let go of the best. We have to trust God's best is better than anything that we can conjure or imagine. Or that we label best and do it God's way. Sometimes God may bring you to a, a fork in the road and He may take you down the narrow, rough pathway, and you have before you this paradise. You think I'd rather go to paradise. But what we don't know is that rough road leads to a better paradise, and God wants us to have the best. And God says, This is what I want. So our worship to God is God. I'll sacrificially do what you want and not what I want. A 
find this very interesting tonight. Amen. Worship is doing what God commands us to do. I'm going to get somewhere else tonight and close on top of this. In Philippians 4.18, does someone know what that says? A sacrifice. That's correct. A sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Let's talk about the phrase, to obey is better than sacrifice. We think we can pacify, pacify, P-A-C-I-F-Y, God by giving Him a sacrifice or what we think is a sacrifice. There are scriptures that admonish us to praise the Word of God. How can we praise God's Word and not obey it? We say we believe God's Word to be true. We believe God's Word to be true. We say it is right, and we, but we don't have to live it. The greatest sacrifice we can give to God is to obey, is to obey Him. And yes, sometimes obedience is a great sacrifice of our will. It's a sacrifice of our will. Could it be that worship is the act of our obedience to God? Our surrendered, separated, separated life. A life that is lived with the highest intention of pleasing our Heavenly Father. God doesn't give the best or even second uh, or, or even second best to disobedient people. To disobedient people. Someone read Deuteronomy 8 verse 1 and 2. I can give you the words if you don't. before your heart, then your heart will get there as well. And so, uh, 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 God's plan and purpose is to make, uh, to make us holy people and to bless us in all we do. But He wants us to obey Him in everything to obtain those blessings. I'm going to stop right there and I'm going to say a few things. Now, the first thing that I'm going to say, I'm going to repeat either this Sunday morning or next Sunday morning. So I just want you to know this, that uh, 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 I, I'm aware that I'm going to repeat this, but some things that are said Tuesday night needs to be said on Sunday morning when there's a bigger platform and we can also educate some folks. But we talk about Pentecost. I still believe in Pentecost. I still believe that we need to live a Pentecostal experience. Uh, when Pentecost was birthed, it was birthed, it was cradled in the Wesleyan movement. You may say, the Wesleyan movement, what is that? John Wesley. Uh, many of you know that. Uh, 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 the Wesleyan movement was this, is that God wants us to live a sanctified life. Now, the Wesleyan movement may also be synonymous with the word holiness. Holiness, Wesleyan, uh, 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 because John Wesley preached that you need to live a separated, distinct life according to the Word of God. It was holiness. 
Now, if you live just by a set of rules itself, uh, it will not save you. I don't want to seem mean, but I'm going to be honest tonight. The Amish can dress in their attire and they can drive a buggy. That will never save their soul. They're wonderful people. My experience with everyone that I've, 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 ever, I've ever met has been nothing but nice. In fact, I have some very good Amish friends. Uh, uh, but I say that because a standard will not save you. Living a, 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 a holiness life in itself, in itself, don't go manipulate my words. That in itself will not save you. You need to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. I believe that when we are saved, we will live a holiness life. Now, you just hold on because I'm going to explain myself entirely. Uh, 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 when, when, when there in Topeka, Kansas, the Wesleyan Holiness Movement was, was going on, and so they were challenged by a local pastor. I, uh, uh, I know his name, but it is not coming to my tongue right now. But they were challenged by a local pastor who was teaching to read the book of Acts. Agnes I, uh, Osborne began to read the book of Acts and came to an understanding that we can live a sanctified life through the power of the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost always has demonstration of speaking in an unknown tongue, and there is always something that accompanies that. There is excitement, there is movement, there is that of the wind, and there is that of the fire. There is that of them thinking that they were drunk. There is that of, of them uh, being filled with the Spirit of God, speaking in other tongues. There started the revival that spread from Topeka, Kansas to Azusa Street in Los Angeles, California, where it really broke out and the Holy Ghost began to move. They were Pentecostal, but they were also holiness because they realized that if they were going to live a holy life pleasing to God, that it was going to take the moving of the Holy Ghost in their life. Now, uh, uh, from that point on, uh, holiness and, and Pentecost began to be spread across North America because of what happened there in, in Azusa Street. Yes, it started in Topeka, Kansas. It spread to Azusa Street. And from there, it spread uh, 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 across North America. And then it spread globally. Uh, even as of today, uh, 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 Pentecost is still the fastest growing religion. However, I must say that we are far from the roots of what Pentecost was. Now, you're going to hear this word used a lot, and I refrain a bit from it uh, because of the connotation that, that is with these folks. But in the 1960s, you had the charismatic movement. This was not a holiness movement. This was not stemmed in a sanctified life, uh, but it was a life of the Spirit and being excited. And many churches today now will tell you that they are charismatic because char uh, 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 char uh, uh, charismatic movement has spread into all different types of denominations, even that of the Catholic Church. But what I want to say is this is that I believe that our sacrifice of worship starts when we live a holiness life. What is a holiness life? Some people look and think, well, it is ethical, it is moral. Uh, uh, you will see that people in their marriage live different. Uh, their, their sexual morality, they live different. Uh, uh, you won't see them being consumed by uh, materialism. You won't find racism in that. It, that is not holiness. I believe that's a product of holiness. But do you know what holiness is? It is, it is the remedy for healing. But holiness is simply this. It means to be set apart. I'm concerned for the church. We are in a state where we think worship is, we go in church and we sing this chorus that repeats the same words 50 times and we'll sing it 100 times over and we'll stand there and we'll sway and that's worship to God. That is a bunch of baloney. That is not biblical worship. Biblical worship is when we have sacrificial worship to God. It says, God, I rid of everything that is not pleasing to you. This is what God's call was. He said, I will be your God and ye shall be my people. God calls us to be his people. 
Someone at work shared with me a post about uh, someone ranting on a Facebook uh, message because this guy, uh, his, his whole attire, he claimed to be a Christian, and his whole attire about him was, was very contrary to what a Christian should even look like. I'm just going to stop there. Number one, I do not go to Facebook to look to church because most of it on there is garbage. Yes, Brother Sabella. And most of your mainstream media preachers that are preaching is nothing but men that are up there to make a buck and, and to make a name for themselves. And they go home and they live lavishly because they, they come and give some type of self-help without, without ever delving into the truth of God's Word and giving people truth. Listen, besides the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no other way to heaven. And without Christ and Christ crucified and us taking up our cross and following after Him, we will never live the life that God has called us to. God said, I will be your God, but ye need to be my people. This is one thing that I know about a holiness life. Amen. That when the Word of God talks about being holy and living holy, it means to be set apart. That God will be our God. We will be His people. We will be dedicated and we will belong to Him. We will look different. Let me tell you, for the folks out there that say, well, I don't need church and they're nothing but a bunch of hypocrites in church, that's because your mind has never been regenerated by the Word of God. Amen. And you do not see your need to be in the house of God and with God's people. Get a hold of yourself and get rid of what you think is best and do it God's way. I know I'm preaching tough tonight, but I'm telling you the truth. So when we are set apart, it simply means this, that we have a relationship with God. I'm not living my life for someone to, to, to get a feel good of what I'm like. My life and your life needs to be lived in relationship with God because we present our bodies as a living sacrifice which is holy and acceptable unto God. God calls us to be holy people. Amen. We are in a holy relationship with God. We look through the lenses of new eyes that Christ has given us because of the revelation of God's Word and because we understand uh, that, 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 that because we are believers, we are now in Christ. Amen. And we are united with Him through His Spirit. And He lives in us and reveals to us how we should live. Amen. I have been crucified with Christ. Paul said, I no longer live, but it is Christ that lives within me. The Word of God says that we are to be hidden with Christ. That we are to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. Do you know what? Christ calls us to be different. We sit in a different realm. Amen. We participate in a new life. Amen. That Christ has given to us. So... Holiness is radical. It's all compassion on all areas of our lives and on our loves and on our identities. We no longer love the things of this world. We no longer think the things of this world are important, but we think Christ is most important. And the things of this world are, are, are waste. Amen. Uh, Jesus child, what 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 benefits a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? I'm talking about a holy relationship with God. God was calling Saul, get rid of it all. It, it's about your relationship with God, Saul. It's about what God's called you to do. Do we think about that in our life? That everything we do, it's about our relationship with God. How we love Him. The words that we speak, the attitudes of our life, the way that we dress, the way that we uh, spend our time and, and, and our love for the Word of God and, 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 and our lack of, of, of love for the things of this world. You see, the world's mark has moved so far off. We just think that holiness is some type of, 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 of moralism. 
All of this is about our relationship. Yes, it will make us moral. But if we're living a, our life wholly because we think it's about being moral, then we've lost it. The problem with Saul is God had called him and allowed him and brought him on the journey, but he forgot about God on the journey. We cannot forget about God on the journey. The reason why we live holy, listen, I don't look down my nose at someone. Yes, there are places that I don't go, and there's people that I don't. And you can say, well, Jesus sat with sinners and he ate with them. Listen, I don't have a problem in loving and being kind, but I don't hang my hat and getting comfortable in the sins of this world. If God's word says it's wrong, it's wrong. And so I love, for I love God most, and I want to do God's work. And so real worship is being in a relationship, all of this, separated into, separated into a relationship with Jesus Christ that brings us into sacrificial worship. And I've gone way longer than I intended to go, but I wouldn't be here tonight just because it seems to be burning my heart. Amen. Someone, you have something you want to say?